What if I told you that I edited this photo only using the Curves tool? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to do it. The Curves tool is one of the most misused and misunderstood tools in Photoshop. It's not very intuitive and it's not very user friendly. We're used to Camera Raw, which has a lot of pretty sliders, shows us exactly what we're doing in real time. However, the Curves tool isn't as user friendly. Today I'm gonna to walk you through step by step. I'm gonna show you how Curves works and I'm gonna show you how powerful it can be in your photo editing. Before we start editing our photo using Curves, I want you to take a look at the interface. Now for right now, ignore all these little icons on the sides and the tops and the bottom. All I want you to do is focus on the box with the histogram in it. Now this is our Curves dialog box and this straight line is about to become what we're gonna call the curve. Now here's how I want you to think of this box. The bottom of it represents our input or in other words, our original image. So we're gonna take our original image, which is this little girl. We're going to input it into the Curves dialog we're gonna make some adjustments on the line, and then we're going to export it out of this side of the box. So this bottom gradient represents the input or our original image, and this side is our output or the new image that we have just edited. Okay, here we are back in Photoshop, and I'm going to click on the Curves Adjustment layer. The Curves Adjustment layer is the best way to use Curves. You could also come up to Image and go to Adjustments and then hit Curves, but the easiest way to do it is just to click the Adjustment layer icon with the Curves symbol in it. Okay, now this image just has black, 50% gray, and white in it. Let's take a look at what Curves can do to this image. If I wanted to adjust the gray stripe, what I would do is come over to my Curves box and click once right in the center because 50% gray is halfway in between black and white. So this is our original image down here. We're gonna take the 50% gray spot and we're gonna push it all the way to the top. Now what's happened here? Well, our gray has become white. So what happened? Well, here's our original image down here, 50% gray. So 50% gray in the output. Instead of outputting it as gray, we pushed it up to white. Now we could bring it back down to the center and it would bring it back to gray. What about the whites? Where are the whites on the curve? The right side of our input is where the whites are. So if we grabbed this box at the very top of our curve and brought it right down to the middle, you can see that we now have 50% gray instead of white. If we drag it all the way to the bottom, it will turn the white point to black. Same for the blacks. The blacks are down here in the corner. We're gonna turn our input, which is black, and we're gonna raise it up here, which is gonna make it brighter. So now we have white, gray, white. We could pull our gray down to black, whoops, and we have white, black, white. What if we pull them all three down? We have complete black. So what this is saying is any brightness level from our original image is going to output this direction on this scale and be pure black. What if we reverse the curve? We would have just the opposite. Our black is now white, gray stayed in the center, and then our whites turned to black. Now, not all images are this simple. This is the most simple case. All right, take a look at this gradient. This gradient is more representative of what you would see in an image. It has a lot of dark areas, has some midtones, and has some very bright highlights. What if we wanted to raise the midtones a little bit? Well, we would click right in the center and push it up. Now, what did it do? Well, remember the bottom is our original image, so here is where the gray is. And instead of outputting it to gray, we pushed it up and we're now outputting it to more of a brighter color, almost white. We can raise our blacks up like this 
Now, instead of our original blacks being black, our original blacks now come out as 50% gray. We could turn our whites all the way to black if we wanted to, and it makes a smooth transition from gray to, well, let's make this one white, gray to white to black. It's a nice smooth curve, and this is why the tool is called Curves. Let's take a look at this image of a color wheel. If I wanted to make this image brighter, I could click in the middle of my curve and simply push up. Or if I wanted to make it darker and even more saturated, I could click on the curve and pull it down. So curves is a very easy way to control brightness levels of your image. Now, not only does it do brightness, but it also does color. Look at these three color channels, red, green, and blue. If we take our curve in the red channel and push it up, it's gonna add and introduce red to our image. If we pull it down, it's going to add the opposite of red, which is cyan. If we click on the color balance adjustment tool, you can see that red, green, and blue have the opposites of cyan, magenta, and yellow. So if you forget those, you can always open up the color balance tool. But let's go back to our curves tool. Let's take a look at the green channel. If I wanna add more green to our image, I would push up on the curve like this, and the opposite of green is magenta, so if I wanted more of a pink tone, I would pull down on the green curve like this. And last but not least is our blue curve. Pushing up adds blue, pushing down adds the opposite, which is yellow. So now you've got a pretty good understanding of how curves work. The input is at the bottom, the input is our original image, and then the output is on the side. Let's take a look at this in real life use. Now here's the image that we're gonna be editing. You can download this image in the description of the video below, and we're only gonna be using curves to edit this image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click on a curves adjustment layer, and I typically like to brighten up my midtones just a little bit and maybe darken the shadows just to give it a little bit of contrast. Now, if we really wanted to, we could go through and label all of our layers. We'll call that one contrast. But typically, I do this pretty quickly, and I don't like to label everything, so I'm not gonna label anything else in this tutorial. Now let's enhance some of the colors that are already in our image. So I'm gonna click on a new curves adjustment layer, and I'm going to hit select and select color range. And I wanna select some of this green in the background. I can adjust the fuzziness slider to select more or less of the image. Then I'm gonna click okay and look what it did. It automatically put a nice mask into our curves adjustment layer. Now, whatever I do with the curves, it's only going to adjust what we just selected. So I'm gonna come down to the green channel and to add green, I'm just gonna push up. Now, you can definitely overdo it. We're not gonna do that. Just a little touch of green. Now we see some more green in the back, a little bit of green over here. I don't want the green in the rocks, so with a black brush, I'm gonna paint on the layer mask and get that out of there. Perfect. Now let's add some blue to our jacket. So I'm gonna hit another curves adjustment layer. Going to hit select color range, and this time I'm gonna click on the blue jacket. I'm gonna turn up the fuzziness a little bit more so we get a little more selection in there. And automatically, Curves has a perfect layer mask with the blues selected. Now in Curves, I'm gonna come down to the blue channel, and I'm going to push up just till we get the right amount of blue. And that looks pretty good. Okay, let's do a little bit of retouching with curves. Now there's not too much you can do, but I'll show you a couple tricks. Let's make a new curves adjustment layer. I'm gonna take the darkest parts of the image and raise them up a little bit. And I'm also going to go to the red channel and add just a little bit of red into the image. Now I'm going to invert that and with a soft white brush, I'm gonna paint on her skin. Now 
This gives her a nice skin tone. And that looks pretty good. Let's make another curves adjustment layer and let's brighten her eyes a little bit. So I'm going to just grab the curve, push it up from the middle, press Command or Control I to invert the mask. And now with a white brush, just going to paint the corners of her eyes like this. I'm gonna zoom back out. Now I'm gonna lower the opacity of that layer, obviously because it's way too bright. There we go. Now let's add a little sun flare to the background of this. So new curves adjustment layer. I'm gonna raise the shadows, maybe raise the midtones a little bit. Come into my blue channel, and instead of pushing up to add blue, I'm going to pull down to add warmth. And let's add a little bit of red to that as well. Now I'm going to hit Command Backspace to turn my mask black. And now I'm just going to paint that in, almost like it's sunlight. And again, if it's too much, we can lower the opacity. Perfect. New curves layer, we're gonna add some blue on this side. So I'm gonna come down to my blue channel and I'm going to grab the darkest point and adjust it like that. I'm gonna invert my layer mask. With the white brush, I'm just gonna paint some color in. Maybe we'll add a little to the rocks. Let's desaturate that a little bit. Starting to look pretty good. Now, how could we fix these shadows under her eyes? Well, let's make a new curves layer. And do we wanna brighten those shadows or darken them? Obviously, we wanna brighten them. So click in the center and drag it up. Now I'm gonna invert the layer mask with a white brush going to paint under her eyes. And it looks pretty fake. We only want this lightning to happen where the shadows are the darkest under her eyes. So we're gonna use some blend if techniques. I'm gonna double click on the curve and we only want it to show up where the underlying layer is dark. So if we move this, so if we drag our brightness slider, you can see under her eyes where it's appearing and disappearing. So we want it to appear and then we're gonna hold down the Alt key and separate this slider. Now it makes a smooth transition from where the curve is being applied to where it's not. So here's before and after, before and after. Looking good, let's add a little bit of redness to her cheeks. So I will make a new curves adjustment layer. In our red channel, let's add a little bit of red. And in the green channel, let's add a little bit of magenta. Invert the mask and with a large soft white brush. I'm just gonna dab once or twice on her cheeks. Obviously she looks a little clown-like right now. So let's turn the opacity way down. There we go. Let's add a little more redness to her lips. So a new curve. Gonna go to the red channel, push up on the reds. And in the RGB channel, which is the general brightness, I think I'm gonna turn down the brightness. And let's see how that looks. Let's invert the mask. Command I. With a white brush, I'm just gonna paint over her lips. Obviously it's way too strong. Now we can go back and edit the curve once it's painted in. Let's change the color a little bit. Let's do a little bit less red. And let's make it a little bit darker. Now we can turn the opacity down. Maybe just down a little more. And there we go. So here is the final image with just a few curves layers, actually a lot of curves layers, but here's before and after, before and after. Guys, thanks for watching today. If you learned anything new, please like and subscribe. I have a lot of new content coming on the way. Have a great day.